Hey what's up guys Josh here. So in this video I'm going to tell you the 10 mistakes that people make while buying a new laptop. So let's jump right into it. The first mistake that people do is buying the cheapest laptop available. I mean simply buying the cheapest one only to get it replaced in 2 or 3 years. The thing is that brands advertise two things either its specification or the pricing and when they are marketing a feature it costs money but when they are marketing the pricing it is having some compromises on the features so simply buying the cheapest laptop for 30000 rupees or 25000 rupees when you are about to join your engineering college or arts college for your programming things then it's simply the worst decision to make because buying such a laptop would only make you replace it in a year or two because those laptops cannot smoothly handle many programming applications and it will simply lead you to regret for not putting some extra money but that doesn't mean that these cheap laptops cannot do their purpose but the thing is that these 30,000 to you know the 25,000 rupees laptops can smoothly handle excel sheets and not intense programming or editing applications. The second mistake that people do is overlooking specifications. For example, people see that in spec sheet that the laptop has backlit keyboard, it's cool right? It has backlit keyboard but the thing is that it has a lot of varieties. Backlit keyboard does full RGB backlit keyboard which has individual uh, control over the RGB LED beneath it and there is single color keyboards which in most cases is white. People see that it has a 15.6 inch screen real estate but they don't care if it's IPS LCD or TFT or OLED display. So the thing is that when you are looking at the spec sheet you should dive deep into it. You should look at every specification. You should do your research properly when you're buying the laptop. When it comes to looking for the GPU, you should also take note of its power rating. For example, you can compare a 3060 GPU and a 3070 GPU and right off the bat, you can, from the tagline, infer that the 3070 GPU will definitely perform better than the 3061. But the thing is that if that 3070 GPU features a low power rating, then that would be definitely superseded by a 3060 GPU with a much higher power rating, which will allow it for better frequency and eventually a high performance. The third mistake that people make while buying a laptop is overpaying. See, the bottom line when it comes to buying a laptop is your requirements. What you need the laptop for. What are your requ requirements? You are gonna uh, run Adobe Premiere Pro on it. You are gonna run the specific game application. You are gonna do your favorite coding work in your favorite application. And that all sums to your requirements. There are a lot of marketing gimmicks that will brainwash you into buying the better and the better laptop. The thing is that you don't have to buy the better laptop at all times. Buying the better and the better laptop isn't an effective decision if you're never gonna uh, tap that extra performance that you paid for. If you're not gonna utilize the extra features, the extra ports, the extra storage and the extra RAM you paid for, then it's definitely a waste of money and you can save that money for an external display or a mechanical keyboard to be attached with your laptop. The fourth mistake that people make is buying a laptop for the highlighted specification uh, the one that it is advertised for. See, it doesn't mean that it's wrong, but don't fall for the scam, simply. Because brands are the best at marketing mostly. They can sell you anything if they can tap your slightest desire. The bottom line is not to fall for a laptop for its highlighted specification for the one that made headlines because these laptops are mostly overpriced and the worst case is for that highlighted specification, there would be a lot of compromises in the laptop and eventually a very overpriced tag. Trust me, if you are a photographer or a videographer or someone who is into this artistic journey, then it's definitely going to affect your experience. And from my experience, you can clearly notice the difference between a very accurate monitor and a non-accurate monitor. For example, if you are editing a picture in a laptop that has a bad color accuracy like 60% is RGB or something, and you are transferring that image to a laptop or a monitor with 100% is RGB, then you can notice a blatant difference in the colors and it would be a slipper shot to see how bad grade monitors affect your art. The sixth mistake that people make is with upgradability and future proof. When you are buying a laptop, then it means a lot to our productivity and also to our future. So we have to put efforts into researching whether it has extra slots that we can fit components into in future in case we are upgrading our laptop. Whether it has an extra 3.5 inch SATA SSD slot or an M.2 SSD slot or a RAM slot because some laptop, mostly Windows laptop, allow and some laptop simply doesn't. Certainly M1 MacBook laptops doesn't allow for that. The seventh mistake that people make is with ports. Carefully read through the spec sheet and see what kind of ports it offers and what it does in so that you can buy an external hub that provides you with that. What power cord it requires, the type C or the conventional power cord, it especially hits hard when you step into the Apple ecosystem where the ports differ by a mile compared to Windows laptops. Eighth one is compromises. There is compromise in every spec sheet. If you're gonna go for a power packed laptop, then you're gonna compromise some battery life for it. Now, 
much battery life for it. When you're going for a park house, not only does it create of battery life, but also portability. If you're going for high refresh rate, high resolution screens, you'll also have to trade off some battery life. And uh, when it comes to gaming laptops, if you're going for a 90 watt hour battery life, then it means that in most cases, you are compromising that 3.5 in SATA SSD slot. So you will have to only rely on the M.2 NVMe SSD slot that's either provided or not. But in my opinion, it's far to lose that 3.5 inch SSD slot for a 90 watt hour battery, but it's a personal choice. The next mistake that people make is overrating the brand. See, I've personally encountered a lot of people who have come up with this idea that if this laptop is from this brand, then I'm going for it. And they don't care about the specifications that much. They don't care about what sort of upgradability or future proof it offers. They don't care about anything. If it is from this brand, then for brand loyalty, I'm just buying it. I'm not saying that this idea is completely wrong, but it's never true. Because the favorite brand that you're aspiring to buy a laptop from might be doing good in the past two years, in the past three years, but the thing is what it is doing now if that laptop that particular model that you're buying is worth paying for because every brand has worst product as well as best products and it doesn't mean that if it is a good brand then it will only offer the products best from the market so research that specific model that you're into from your favorite youtubers or the reviewers you trust and simply not go after brand tag names the last mistake that people make is with the form factor. There's a variety of form factors available in the market. There's the larger 17 inch form factors, a lot of 17 inch screens, and there's the smaller ones with uh, the, the two in one features, you know, the foldable ones, 360 degree foldable ones with touch screens. The thing is that with one, the 17 inch real estate laptops, it simply ruins the purpose of being a laptop but not, not being portable at all for most people that I've encountered. But if you definitely want that 17 inch form factor, then you should go for it. And when it comes to two in one laptops, most of the laptops in the market right now, which are considered to be budget friendly two in one laptops, aren't living up to the tagline. As far as I've experienced, the budget two in one laptop simply feels like you using a high-end tablet with a keyboard attached to it and no different. But if you are onto that and you're completely aware of that fact, then it's no compliant. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.